What are national parks and how many are there? A national park is more than just a game or nature reserve. Its purpose is to conserve a representative portion of the natural and cultural biodiversity of the country. There are currently 21 parks in the National Park Stable plus a head office in Pretoria. These are located in eight of the nine provinces with only KwaZulu-Natal having no sun parks. South Africa is blessed with a range of natural heritage of very different habitat types and experience. Thus one can choose between a whole selection of experiences in visiting the various national parks including savanna parks and semi-desert parks, coastal parks, Cape Floral Kingdom parks, parks with forests and grasslands. Many of the parks contain more than one habitat and also a wide range of natural, cultural and tourism exposures can be found within any one park. While large African game is a feature of many of the parks, others are more focused on aquatic ecosystems, vegetation, cultural or scenic landscape. Addo Elephant National Park Now the third largest national park in South Africa, Addo Elephant National Park has expanded to conserve a wide diversity of biodiversity, landscapes, fauna and flora. Stretching from the semi-arid Karoo area in the north, around Darlington Dam, over the rugged Zurbar Mountains, through the Sundays River Valley and south to the coast between Sundays River Mouth and Bushman's River Mouth. Addo covers over 180,000 hectares, around 444,700 acres, and includes the Bird and St. Croix Island groups. The original elephant section of the park was proclaimed in 1931, when only 16 elephants remained in the area. Today, this finely tuned ecosystem is sanctuary to over 550 elephants, lions, buffalo, black rhino, spotted hyena, leopard, a variety of antelope and zebra species, as well as the unique Addo flightless dung beetle, found almost exclusively in Addo. And Addo has only just begun with plans to expand the park into a 264,000 hectares, 652,300 acre mega park. In addition, plans include the proposed proclamation of a 120 hectare, 296,500 acre marine protected area that includes islands that are home to the world's largest breeding population of Cape Gannets and largest breeding population of endangered African penguins. Agullas National Park This is the same spirit that captivated the explorers of yesteryear who braved one of the most challenging sea crossings of their time, the Atlantic Indian Ocean crossing via Cape Agullas. As the southernmost tip of Africa, it has always had its mysteries and adventure and still captures the imagination of contemporary explorers. Amongst the mysteries associated with the region is the legendary Cape of Storms, which wrecked many ships en route to the east via Cape Agullas. Ancient people also left their mark on the landscape. For example, Archaeological middens remind contemporary man of a successful hunter-gathering culture that was in harmony with its natural environment and a cultural heritage that dates back thousands of years to when the Khoikhoi Khoi people trapped fish using ingeniously constructed tidal traps. This windswept, rugged, beautiful coastal plain at the southernmost tip of Africa with its rich cultural and natural heritage has recently been proclaimed as the Ogullas National Park on the 23rd of September 1999. This park started as a four hectare portion of land at the southern tip and has grown through the addition of 36 portions, bringing the area of the park to 20,959 hectares. Ukhrabi's Falls National Park. The Khoi people called it Akurubis or place of great noise as this powerful flow of water is unleashed from rocky surroundings characterized by the 18 kilometer abyss of the Orange River Gorge. Picturic names such as Moon Rock, Ararat and Echo Corner are descriptive of this rocky region. Klipspringer and Kukerboom, quiver trees stand in stark silhouette against the African sky. Silent sentinels in a strangely unique environment where only those that are able to adapt ultimately survive. 
This 55,383 hectares on both the northern and southern sides of the Orange River provides sanctuary to a diversity of species, from the very smallest succulents, birds and reptiles, to springbok, gemsbok and giraffe. The Falls As the Orange River approaches Ochrabi's Falls, it divides itself into numerous channels before cascading down the 56-meter high waterfall. The river then continues its path through an 18-kilometer gorge. The sight and sound of the power of the water will not be easily forgotten. Moon Rock A massive exfoliation dome or whaleback which is a prominent landmark of Ochrabi's Falls. Walking to the summit will give one of the best views of the park and its surroundings. Montebok National Park A part of the Cape Floral Kingdom, now heralded as a World Heritage Site, Montebok National Park always offers something in bloom. The park is proud to promote its achievements in biodiversity conservation, from the endangered Feinbos felt type, coastal Renosterfeld, to the namesake Montebok. Once these colorful antelope numbered a mere 17, and through effective management, we are proud to affirm that the present world population amounts to around 3,000. The park offers much more for nature lovers, from a diversity of indigenous animal life to over 200 remarkable bird species. The Breda River provides an idyllic western border to the park and offers guests scenery, bird watching, fishing, and a refreshing swimming spot. Visitors can also get a profound familiarity of the park's endless sights and sounds while on one of the various hiking trails or on a winding bike trip. Furthermore, Bontebok provides its guests with an experience of South African culture. Connect to the people of the past and learn how the Khoisan lived and changed through local history. Come and enjoy all we have to offer, from adventure or a lazy day braai to a relaxing stay in a park of natural and cultural tranquility. Kamdebu National Park A unique feature of the 19,405 hectare park is its location, practically surrounding the town of Grafrenet in the Eastern Cape. The greater portion of the park is situated between 740 and 1,480 meters above sea level on the foothills of the Sneeuwberg range while a small section of the low-lying plains is included. The Kweba Dam lies within the park and covers about 1,000 hectares when full. At some places, dolerites form jointed pillars, the best examples of which are found in the Valley of Desolation, where erosion of the softer sedimentary beds has left dolerite pillars which rise to heights of 90 to 120 meters. Garden Route, Tsitsikama, Naisna Wilderness National Park A mosaic of ecosystems, it encompasses the world-renowned Tsitsikama and wilderness sections, the Naisna Lake section, a variety of mountain catchment, Southern Cape indigenous forest and associated Feinbos areas. These areas resemble a montage of landscapes and seascapes from ocean to mountain areas and are renowned for its diverse natural and cultural heritage resources. Managed by South African National Parks, it hosts a variety of accommodation options, activities and places of interest. A jewel in South African's crown, the park is a prime example of the country's unique fauna and flora and will offer unforgettable views and lifelong memories. Tsitsikama National Park a region of incredible beauty along South Africa's famed garden route. The Sitsikama National Park is an area of spectacular scenery and forms part of South African national parks. Towering cliffs overlook the lush forest canopy below where Feinbos Heath, covering approximately 30% of the park, and Proteus carpet the forest floor. Combining terrestrial, coastal or marine ecosystems, the park encompasses an 80-kilometer ecological mosaic of winding riverines along the coast between the rolling Tsitsikama Mountains and the warm Indian Ocean. Tsitsikama takes its name from the Khoisan phrase for place of abundant water. Its national park is Africa's oldest and largest marine reserve and one of the largest marine protected areas in the world. 
making it an integral area of marine fauna and flora conservation in South Africa. There are a number of exciting activities in the region and plenty for the curious traveler to see. Enjoy walks and hikes through the extraordinary forests and when adventure calls, take to the air on a canopy tour and see giant ferns and Otuniqua yellowwoods from above. The famous Otter Trail, well known amongst hikers, offers a challenging hike alongside ragged kloofs and waterfalls, along a strip of impressive shoreline and through lush indigenous forests. The Storms River Mouth Rest Camp is situated in the eastern area of the Tsitsikama Park, resting along 80 kilometers of dramatic shoreline between the sloping forests of the park and the restless breakers of the Indian Ocean. Guests can choose from a wide selection of comfortable accommodation options, including, but not limited, to chalets, forest huts, ocean head cabins and family cottages. Nature's Valley Rest Camp is a haven for bird watchers and hikers alike, but also offers canoeing and a pristine beach for guests to use at their leisure. With 45 campsites and 10 cabins nestled in the heart of the forest, accommodation is simple and rustic, allowing guests to experience the pleasure of living close to nature. Wilderness National Park One of the prime stops along the Western Cape's garden route is the stunning Wilderness National Park. Stretching from the mouth of the Toes River all the way through to the Gokama Nature Reserve, the Wilderness National Park is a Ramsar site and an internationally proclaimed area of wetland conservation. The park is made up of entwining lakes, estuaries and river systems that flow out onto the windswept East Coast beaches. It offers a range of exciting outdoor activities as well as restful accommodation in the midst of truly breathtaking scenery. Wilderness Park is set in a lush mountainous area which boasts dense indigenous forests. You'll find giant tree ferns and Otuniqua yellowwoods crisscrossed by winding nature trails and dotted with the brightly colored pink of the Naisna Turaku, as well as a kaleidoscope of blossoming wildflowers. The system of rivers, lakes and ocean is the habitat of a diverse ecosystem of aquatic animals, including the rare and endangered Nisna seahorse and is perforated here and there with crystalline rock pools. With the various outdoor activities available here, the area is abyss with adventure and capable of enthralling visitors for hours. Explore the natural splendor of Wilderness Park by bike or canoe, or go abseiling, kloofing, paragliding, fishing and hiking. Dolphins and whales can be spotted from high above the coastline at Dolphin Point, or visitors can spend time in the bird hide looking for the wading Caspian Tern or Kelp Gull. From the famous map of Africa viewpoint, the predatory Cuckoo Hawk, Crowned Eagle, Sparrow Hawk and African Goshawk can be seen spiraling in the thermals above the Caymans River Valley. The beautiful rest camps are made up of rows of bright and tidy cottages and campsites, which are nestled under a lush canopy of trees close to the water's edge. Lazy days spent floating over one of the five lakes, long walks down the 30-kilometer stretch of protected coastline, and scenic drives around the beautiful surroundings of the garden route, all await you at the Wilderness National Park, one of Sun Park's most inspiring offerings. Neisner National Lake Area, haven to the seahorse. The exceptionally beautiful Neisner National Lake Area is home to the endangered Neisner seahorse and a large diversity of marine life. Sandbanks and salt marshes teem with life and in turn provide food to an immeasurable number of organisms. Dominated by the craggy bastions of the twin Neisner heads, the lagoon has borne witness to centuries of trade in timber, ivory and gold. The lake area enjoys a temperate climate and visitors can revel in the warm summer sun. The Neisner seahorse is a very unusual fish. The only place in the world where it is found is in the national lake area, Swartfle and Kyrbom estuaries in the Southern Cape. Two massive sandstone cliff formations called the Heads mark the place where the estuaries opens to the Indian Ocean. They are one of the most striking features along the entire South African coastline. The estuary, commonly known as the Neisler Lagoon, forms the heart of the national lake area. 
It is fed by a river which has its origins in the Otuniqua Mountains. The estuary is 19 kilometers long and gradually widens and deepens to form a lagoon approximately 3 kilometers wide and about 5 meters deep. The name Nisna is a word of Khoi origin. There is much uncertainty, however, as to its exact meaning. It could mean place of wood or fern leaves, but also straight down. The latter being the most popular one and an obvious reference to the heads. The town's history began in the year 1804, the year that saw the arrival of George Rex, rumored to be the illegitimate son of King George III. He purchased the estate known as Malkhoat Kral on the shores of the lagoon and moved his entire family and considerable entourage down to settle there. Golden Gate Highlands National Park The park derives its name from the brilliant shades of gold cast by the sun on the park's sandstone cliffs, especially the imposing Brandwach Rock, keeping vigil over the main rest camp. This 11,600 hectares of unique environment is true highland habitat, providing home to a variety of mammals, black wildebeest, eland, blesbok, orobi, springbok and virtual zebra, and birds including the rare bearded vulture, lammergeier, and the equally rare bald ibis, which breed on the ledges in the sandstone cliffs. Ribbok Kop, the highest point in the park, reveals a breathtaking tapestry of red, yellow and purple hues as its warm shades merge with the cool mountain shadows towards evening. Karoo National Park The Great Karoo is a vast and unforgiving landscape of which the Karoo National Park is but a small portion. Being the largest ecosystem in South Africa, the Karoo is home to a fascinating diversity of life, all having adapted to survive in these harsh conditions. Karoo National Park is dominated by the lofty Nuverfeld Mountains and rolling plains, where many species that originally occurred here now occupy their former ranges. The Karoo National Park has a wide variety of endemic wildlife. Many species have been relocated to their former ranges, such as black rhino and buffalo, as well as Cape Mountain Zebra. Over 20 breeding pairs of Black Eagle find sanctuary within the park. There is also a wide diversity of succulent plants and small reptiles. Mapungubwe National Park Come and join these diverse pilgrims and share unforgettable moments sipping sundowners at the confluence of the legendary Limpopo and Shashe rivers. Watch the eagles soar over Botswana and Zimbabwe skies, hear the echo of elephant trumpets, take a treetop walk or just relax and absorb the surroundings. Mapungubwe National Park and World Heritage Site is rich in biodiversity, great scenic beauty and the cultural importance of the archaeological treasures of Mapungubwe. Marakele National Park Contrasting majestic mountain landscapes, grass-clad hills and deep valleys characterize the park. Rare finds of yellowwood and cedar trees, 5-meter-high cycads and tree ferns are some of the plant species found here. All the large game species from elephant and rhino to the big cats as well as an amazing variety of birds including what's probably the largest colony of endangered cape vultures more than 800 breeding pairs in the world have settled here. Mokala National Park The isolated Dolorite Hills give the place a calming feeling of seclusion. A big surprise awaits when you pass through the hills and are confronted by the large open sandy plains towards the north and west of the park. Drainage lines from the hills form little tributaries that run into the plains and drain into the grasslands in the nest of the park. Mokala is a Setswana name for a camel thorn, Kamildurang. These trees occur in dry woodland and arid sandy areas and are one of the major tree species of the desert regions of southern Africa. This immensely important species has a great range over the northern Cape and varies from a small spiny shrub barely 2 meters high to a tree of up to 16 meters tall with a wide spreading crown. The camel thorn is an incredible resource to both wildlife and humans who survive in often harsh conditions 
characteristic of this area. Traditionally, the gum and bark have been used by local tribes to treat coughs, colds and nosebleeds. Some even use the roasted seeds as a coffee substitute. Mountain Zebra National Park The proclamation of the park in 1937 saved these animals from extinction and currently their population stands at 300 where they roam 28,412 hectares of land. Other mammals found here include the cheetah, cape buffalo, black rhino, eland, black wildebeest, red hartebeest and gemsbok, while mountain reedbuck and grey ribok frequent the higher areas. In addition, the carousel is the primary predator. Namakwa National Park Every turn in the road paints an unforgettable picture. Valleys filled with Namakwaland daisies and other spring flowers that pulse with sheer energy and joy. Next to some eye-catching succulents, a porcupine and a tall aloe pay witness to a baboon overturning a rock and bouncing on a scorpion. During early August and September, seemingly overnight, the dusty valleys of Namakwaland are transformed into a wonderland, carpeted with wildflowers. With its winter rainfall, Makwaland is home to the richest bulb flora of any arid region in the world. And more than a thousand of its estimated 3,500 plant species are found nowhere else on earth. Escape to the land of contrasts, where the rigorous climate has created a myriad of life forms superbly adapted to their specific habitat. Fields of flowers, star-studded nights, quiver trees, Enormous granite outcrops and the icy Atlantic are but a few wonders that await the visitor to what is truly the creator's playground. Table Mountain National Park Situated at the southwestern tip of Africa, the Table Mountain National Park encompasses the incredibly scenic Table Mountain chain, stretching from Signal Hill in the north to Cape Point in the south, and the seas and coastline of the peninsula. The narrow finger of land with its beautiful valleys, bays and beaches is surrounded by the waters of the Atlantic Ocean in the west and the warmer waters of False Bay and has within its boundaries two world-renowned landmarks, Majestic Table Mountain and the legendary Cape of Good Hope. The park is recognized globally for its extraordinary rich, diverse and unique fauna and flora with rugged cliffs, steep slopes and sandy flats, it is a truly remarkable natural, scenic, historical, cultural and recreational asset, both locally and internationally. Nowhere else in the world does an area of such spectacular beauty and such rich biodiversity exist almost entirely within a metropolitan area, the thriving and cosmopolitan city of Cape Town. A unique feature of the Table Mountain National Park is that it is primarily an open access park with only three points where conservation fees are payable Cape of Good Hope, Boulders and Silver Mine. The rest of the park is open access and free for all to enjoy. Unlike the other parks, the Table Mountain National Park is surrounded entirely by a city and for this reason it is fragmented by urban development and privately owned land. This combined with the fact that it is primarily an open access park with only three managed pay points has resulted in it being the most visited of all national parks receiving a quota of 4.2 million visits annually. Prior to the establishment of the park a 30,000 hectare area of conservation worthy land on the peninsula was identified as the Cape Peninsula Protected Natural Environment. Currently the Table Mountain National Park includes 25,000 hectares of the Cape Peninsula protected natural environment and it is our goal to incorporate the remaining 5,000 hectares into the park. The Table Mountain National Park jurisdiction also includes a thousand square kilometers of the seas and coastline around the peninsula.
Tangwa Karoo National Park. Tangwa Karoo National Park is situated on the southern boundary of the Northern Cape with a Rochefeld escarpment in the east, Cedarburg in the west and Klein Rochefeld Mountains in the south. Just a four hour drive from Cape Town brings you to this truly unique national park. Situated within the succulent Karoo Baumi, the area is renowned for its rare and endemic plant species, rich bird life and landscapes that will take your breath away. From the sheer cliffs of the Rochefeld Escarpment to the moonscapes of the Tangwa Desert. While Tangwa Karoo National Park is still in developmental and land consolidation phase, expanding from the original 26,000 hectares in 1986 to nearly 143,600 hectares by late 2010, it is the ideal destination for those seeking the brightest stars in Africa. A once in a lifetime glimpse of a rare endemic bird or perhaps nothing more than a silence that reaches deep into the soul. West Coast National Park Thousands of seabirds roost on sheltered islands, pristine golden beaches stretch endlessly into the early morning mist and brooding salt marshes are home to vast concentrations of migrant waders on the northern hemisphere. During the spring the Strandfeld is embroidered with a tapestry of multi-hued flowers while in the Postberg section, many antelope are to be seen in a setting that is as unique as it is idyllic. Ice Richtersfeld Transfrontier Park. Make a startling discovery upon closer inspection when the mirage dissolves into the human-like half-mains, half-person and the harsh environment proved to be a treasure chest containing the world's richest desert flora. Miniature rock gardens, perfectly designed by nature, cling precariously to cliff faces. Tiny succulents, mere pinpoints against the backdrop of surreal rock formations, revel in the moisture brought by the early morning fog rolling in from the cold Atlantic Ocean. Rugged kloofs, high mountains and dramatic landscapes that sweep away inland from the Orange River divulge the fact that you are now in the vast mountain desert that is the Eyeis Richtersfeld National Park. An area managed jointly by the local Nama people and the South African National Parks. This is a harsh and unpredictable land where water is scarce and life-sustaining moisture comes in the form of early morning fog called Ayuris or Malmokis by the local people, which rolls in from the cold waters of the Atlantic Ocean, sustaining a remarkable range of small reptiles, birds and mammals. A staggering assortment of plant life, some species occurring nowhere else is to be found here, with gnarled quiver trees, tall aloes and quaint half maids keeping vigil over this inscrutable landscape. The park is only accessible by means of a 4x4 vehicle, but vehicles with high clearances such as combis and LDVs do travel in the park. Sedan vehicles are not permitted. There is no specific route that can be booked in advance. Kruger National Park The world-renowned Kruger National Park offers a wildlife experience that ranks with the best in Africa. Established in 1898 to protect the wildlife of the South African Lofeld, this national park of nearly 2 million hectares, Sun Parks, Kruger National Park is unrivaled in the diversity of its life forms and a world leader in advanced environmental management techniques and policies. Truly the flagship of the South African national parks, Kruger is home to an impressive number of species, 336 trees, 49 fish, 34 amphibians, 114 reptiles, 507 birds and 147 mammals. Man's interaction with the low-felt environment over many centuries, from Bushman rock paintings to majestic archaeological sites like Masurini and Tulamela, is very evident in the Kruger National Park. These treasures represent the cultures, persons and events that played a role in the history of the Kruger National Park and are conserved along with the park's natural assets. Kalahari Transfrontier Park An amalgamation of the Kalahari Gemsbok National Park in South Africa, proclaimed in 1931, and the Gemsbok National Park in Botswana, 
the Khalakhari Transfrontier Park comprises an area of over 3.6 million hectares, one of very few conservation areas of this magnitude left in the world. Red sand dunes, spares vegetation, and the dry riverbeds of the Nosop and Aop show antelope and predator species off to spectacular advantage and provide excellent photographic opportunities. Kalahari is also a haven for birders, especially those interested in birds of prey. It offers outstanding accommodation in the form of thatched cottages and many smaller camps have lately been erected, bringing the visitor closer to the unequal thrill of staying amongst the dunes with lions walking past at night only a few feet away. The Khalakhani Transfrontier Park offers a truly unique wilderness experience. When we create Amarula, we let nature take its course. At our plantation, we let our trees grow wherever they choose. Our irrigation system is erratic, but effective. Our temperature control is self-regulating. And when our most stringent tasters arrive and give us the nod, this exotic fruit is distilled and blended with cream to create a superior drink for those special moments. Amarula, the spirit of Africa.